Good morning! Artist Charles Wolf here, and today I am going to be showing you how to paint my wonderful little acrylic painting Orange Sky. This is brought to you by my studio, and be sure to check out my art blog at impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. Again, that is impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com, and I will be putting a link in the description below. So today we're going to be doing a beautiful little acrylic sunset painting. It's pretty simple to do. You're going to need some acrylic paints. You can use, if you really want to, the cheap $1 craft acrylic paints. I don't recommend that, but they will work for this painting. Um, I like to use some of the more expensive acrylic professional brands. And I also will use um, uh, some of the midline stuff, like the Liquitex Basics and things like that. Those work okay. Um, but of course the higher quality acrylic you buy, the more it's going to be responsive it'll be, it'll mix better on the palette and all that kind of stuff. And that's my suggestion. I don't want to recommend any one brand over another. Uh, at this point, just um, get some paint and get painting, practice your skills, and as you get better, get better paint. Okay, as you can see here, I've started with some orange. I believe this color is called carrot, carrot orange. I forget the... Um, I think it says on the tube. Anyway, so I'm using some of this orange here, and uh, it's just a great color. And I'm just going to cover the top, uh, it's not like a top two eighths of the canvas. Yeah, it's going to be the same as one fourth of the canvas. And then I'm going to create sort of a U shape on the bottom. So as you will see, I'm going to, I'm just taking the, the brush there, and I'm just wiggling it back and forth. I'm loading the brush when I run out, just straight from the tube. I've squirted it out on some cardboard that you can't see. I like to use cardboard um, because I can just throw it away when I'm done. I don't have to, you know, mix the acrylic paint with the palette that I use for my oil paintings. So it's a cheap little trick. If you don't have a palette, don't need one. Use, use cardboard. It works just as well, and, and it's cheaper. Now when you're doing this, look for even coverage of the paint. You really want to make sure that across a layer of color, so we're going to be making multiple layers of colors here, that you have an even coverage. Anyways, I'm making a U shape down here, and I'm going to actually accentuate it even more so when I sort of move and forward, it's going to creep up the sides even higher, almost to the center of the painting. And I'm sort of mirroring that above. I'm just, again, using that orange color and making sure I have an even coat. I want it to be pretty bright, pretty bold, and I am making sure that at this point it's just straight one color, and I'm using just a gentle amount of pressure on that brush, and as you can see as I get lower here I'm really scraping out all the paint out of the brush. Uh, and I want some layers to it so I don't mind scraping out all of the excess and then going back and getting some more. I'm going to switch to some white here. This is titanium white. And I'm, again, using that sort of stroke, left and right, left and right, and that little more white there. This painting is really inspired by two things. My love of the ocean has been a big part of my life, living in California and now here in Raleigh, North Carolina, as well as the gorgeous sunsets over the Lake Champlain in Vermont, where my wife's family is from. Just keep working it upward. I'm going to lighten this whole area up. Now, it's okay if you go a little bit too white because we're going to darken it back up by adding some more uh, orange back in on top of that. We're going to create some layers. Our acrylics dry fairly quickly. If you want to speed up the process, you can use a hair dryer and hold it a couple seconds on each spot and away you go. But here I'm going to be, again, whatever I do on top, I'm doing the bottom. This is a sunset painting, like I said, and so I'm doing the sky above and then a reflection in the water below. So I want to make sure that I keep them more or less the same. Okay, back to the orange. And it was getting a little bit too white, so I wanted some more orange. And I'm going to work that downwards a little bit. And just kind of have a simple little gradation happening where I'm going from orange into a light white, milky orange. Now I'm going to bring in some pink. I've taken some bright red and I've mixed it heavily with some white. And I'm going to add that in a little bit more white there. And then I'm going to be bringing in that pink for this guy. Okay, more red. I wasn't quite happy with the color there. So I'll bring a little bit more red. If you want it to be a bolder, bloody red, add more red. If you want it to be a lighter pinkish, you can add more white. 
either way it works just fine. A little bit more red, I want it to sort of start really transitioning. Again, it's all about subtle gradations at this point. We're going to add clouds on top of this guy. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The line, there can be a little bit of a break between one color to the next. It's got to fade as softly as it can, but if it's a little bit of this is orange, this is white, it's okay. Um, or this is orange, this is pink, it's okay because we're going to be, like I said, um, adding clouds and mountains and things on top. So it's okay if not perfectly one to the next but as much as we can we want a nice subtle movement from the orange to the pink don't overwork it though because then you'll get just mush <laughs> so it's a kind of a balancing act with this uh, a little bit more red here i'm using red just straight straight red and then i'll add a little bit of white to it to give that pink and i'm going to have it be more pure red and i'm just leaving a band of the canvas i've actually covered the canvas in a red gesso before I started to give it a warmer color because I knew I was going to doing a very very warm painting so if any of the canvas shows through I want it to be a warm red color and not to be that very cool very distracting white for this piece and so having the red underneath all this warm colors just helps it glow I think and I just really like that it's just a red uh, guess so oh getting bold here putting a little bit more white and uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because as you see where I'm touching the canvas there, it's white up there, therefore it needs to be white down below. Now for this painting, I'm kind of uh, being dramatic, and I decided to make the shadows, if it's a little bit of white at the top, I'm making it more white at the bottom. If it's a little band of orange at the top, it's going to be a bigger band of orange. I'm really exaggerating the layers, and that's just a stylistic choice of having a very quick change in the sky to a much longer change out in the water. And that band across the center, that horizontal line of just exposed canvas is going to be where I'm going to put in my mountains as soon as I'm happy with this guy. So it's kind of going from a orange to a whitish orange to a whitish pink to a pink to a red very quickly. Okay, a little bit more orange at the bottom here. Like I said, I, I kind of lost my U shape here, so I'm trying to find it again and I'm trying to bring up that orange. It's a little bit more vibrant. Uh, painting is kind of a balancing act. If you go with one thing, you can go back and you can add a little bit of something else over top of it, and it just works out so well. I love painting because unlike drawing where you have to make a mistake, you can erase it or you can add another line, try to fix it or cover it up. When you are painting, it's so much easier to move things around. And um, you can take a little rag or even take paper towel and just scrape off the excess and start again. It's very easy to fix, it's very forgiving. Um, and with acrylic paint, it's nice is if you want a more watercolor effect, you can add a little bit more water to your brush and it will help you move things around. Okay, it is time to do the mountains. I'm going to be starting with a thin little liner brush. You could also use a rigger for this if you had one, um, but I'm just using a basic liner brush, it's very small. I'm not exactly sure what the size is, but mm, maybe zero. Pretty small. Here I am using very dark gray paint and what I've done I've taken some black and I've added just a touch of white to it. My initial idea for this painting was to have a band of black across the center to indicate the horizon line. However on reflection I decided to go with more realistic looking mountains. I actually had a band of black in my last painting of this series. This is my Sun Cycle series and my last painting was called Sunrise at Sea. It's a little blue painting. You can see it on my art blog. So head over there and check that out. One painting tip I'd like to share with you right now is don't hold your brush too tightly. Allow the bristles to do a lot of the work and don't put too much pressure on the brush. Um, just kind of press it in as much as you need to, but not too much pressure. I recommend that you take a palette knife and you scrape out each of your colors. So have the blob of paint pull it straight out so it's kind of a long flat line of paint and then you can take your brush and you can load it by going horizontal against the vertical column of paint. Here you can see I'm adding some ridges to these mountains 
and some movement. And remember, because it is a reflection, um, as the water is going right up to the mountains, just like it is on Lake Champlain in Vermont, we have to mirror what we do above, below. So as you can see, I'm going to start mirroring those mountains as they go up on the top. They're going to have to duplicate that in reverse on the bottom. What I do on top, I must do as well on the bottom. I'm going to add a line of the milky orange next, right at the bottom of the mountain, just a straight line across, sort of give you an indication of where the bottom of the mountains are in relationship to the water. And I'm making sure that as I go around those corners of the canvas, I am continuing the painting. I want to paint around that little corner there. Uh, this is a pretty thin little canvas, not too deep, and um, I like to use these thinner canvases um, just because of cost, but also um, they're easier to store. I can keep more of them in my home. The thick gallery style, two inch deep canvases are a lot of fun to paint on, but they take up so much room that um, in my little house, um, I just don't have enough room to keep too many of those uh, at this point. So I don't tend to buy those larger ones, or to, I can make them myself if I wanted to, but eh, it's too much work. It's easier just to buy a canvas and get to painting, which is what I like to do, get to the painting. Uh, I'm not much of a craftsman and taking the time to put them all together. It's really neat if you can do it, but it's so time consuming. And I'm going to begin putting in these clouds. now. For the clouds, I have taken purple. I've slowed it down so that I've added a little bit of black to it to make it darker. And I'm just going to put these little thin lines. As things get further up, I'm trying to leave a little bit more space. But as they get closer to the horizon, I'm going to put them more densely packed together. That will help create the illusion of depth. So I'm going to add a whole mess of clouds here. and. I am just doing these streaks across. Um, I don't care if they're perfectly straight, in fact I don't want them to be. I'm more or less, some of them will connect to others, some of them will be completely separate. They're just these little streaks and then suddenly you have some clouds and they look great. Now remember, whatever we do on top we need a mirror on the bottom and so I will spend a little bit of time very carefully making sure that what happens on top more or less also happens on the bottom um, in the water reflections so be careful when you're doing that to make sure you're mirroring it down and replicating it below pretty pretty accurately fairly accurately uh, this will be perfect because we are going to have a smeared water effect so that's important to realize but good thing to keep in mind just going to keep going here with my clouds my happy little clouds Mm, I love that purple color against the orange. It's so striking. It's great. Okay, now I'm going to start adding the reflections of the clouds in the water. I'm still using that purplish um, black mixture, and whenever time I go to get more paint on my brush, I am changing the mixture slightly. So I'll maybe a little bit more purple one time, a little bit darker the next time, and so forth. Um, if I happen to get one cloud too wide, it's okay because I'm going to add a highlight color next on top of this base coat so I can adjust the thickness of the reflections um, as I go along. So as I said, painting is very forgiving and make a mistake, it's not a big deal. You can either take a paper towel and wipe it off or um, you can just make some adjustments as you go along. We don't have to mirror them perfectly, just kind of give a hint of what you're what you're doing. Okay, add a few more here and there. I'm adding a bit more red. You can see I'm thinning out some of those clouds. Very easy to make a little bit too thick. So just gonna make a couple changes about that. In a moment, I'm gonna be switching back to the larger flathead brush. So when I do, make sure that your flathead brush is clean um, before you get back into it. Uh, whenever you're going to add another layer of color, it's a good idea to clean your brush. Now I'm using this flathead brush to bring in a little bit more of that pink and to smooth out the bottom of those clouds to make them look a little bit fluffier. So, yeah.
There we go. A little bit more pink, a little more red, and back to making clouds. Woohoo! With the smaller liner brush, um, with the purple and gray black mixture. Next, we are going to start adding in the sun itself for the sunset using yellow. The brush that I am using for this is another small, very thin liner brush, making small little horizontal strokes here. And wherever I see I have a cloud, I am going to, on the underside of it, where the light would strike from our sunset, I'm going to put a bit of yellow hitting the bottom and just illuminating those beautiful purple clouds that we have from before. So the purple is the background color and it's going to be a striking contrast to the yellow which is going to be the highlight color of our clouds. On each cloud I'm going to add in a little bit of that highlight color. Now here it comes. This is the, my favorite part of every painting is when I get to draw in the, I don't know what it's called, the sun beam, the sun splatter. <laughs> I have no idea, but the favorite part is the reflection of the actual sunlight, the beam of light that comes down. Oh, it's so much fun to paint, and it just really pulls the whole composition together. Uh, that cut was just so that um, there was a jiggle in the camera, and I just wanted to make sure there was no jiggle. So I did cut over. I tried to maintain, maintain as much as I could of the footage as possible. I've just taken that yellow, and I've added a little orange to it, and a little pink, and I've thinned it out. And I'm kind of putting in some more of that yellow light in between the clouds. The brightest parts are, of course, underneath the clouds, but in between as well. I just felt like it needed some more light um, hitting the bottom and just illuminating that entire uh, bottom, I don't know, eighth of the sky there. And I'm going to increase the brightness of the sun itself here. With a bit more yellow straight from the tube. Here it comes, making a little half dome there. And then there's your sun. So easy, just making a little half dome. Perfect. I decided in this piece not to center my sun directly in the center of the canvas, but to have it slightly off-center. Um, I think it makes it to be slightly asymmetrical, a little off-balance, and that's great because I have found that when I put the sun directly in the center, the whole composition is a little bit boring. This way, it's a slightly more dynamic and energetic. Taking my liner brush here, I'm going to be adding some of the reflections of the sunlight on the bottom of the clouds. And I'm going to make them slightly more intense purposely um, on the bottom as it is a reflection. Another quick cut, and that is just because I had another jiggle of the camera. Sorry about that. But I did not skip forward at all in this painting. Um, so you're seeing the entire footage from start to finish. Adding a bit more red here, I just didn't think it was intense enough, and I felt like, you know what it needs? It needs some more red up in the sky. So I'm slightly deviating from my pink plan. The pink is still there. I'm just adding a bit more red to it. Okay, I'm going to mirror that again. What happens above happens below. Just going to keep with the program here. All right. This is very simple, so simple, and there's no right or wrong way of doing this. You don't, your clouds don't have to be exactly in the same spots as mine. Just kind of follow the rule of thumb of it's kind of a band of yellow, then pink, then a little bit darker red, and then the orange, and it'll work out. And I'm sort of just taking and putting in some trailing water lines here very loosely. I'm not even kind of trying to control too much uh, where they're falling. I'm just sort of slapping them in and pushing pretty hard to dig that paint into the canvas. Uh, the paint underneath has started to dry already. It dries very quickly. So I um, have just applying it on a partially dry layer. I'm also not putting very much paint on my brush when I'm doing this so that I can kind of use it scrub the like and just kind of scrub everything in and get all those wonderful little effects. <music> back and I realized I need to have had a few more clouds. I sort of lost them. 
I'm gonna have to do that on that left hand side in a minute. I haven't got back to it yet, but I will fix that left hand side. I don't know if you noticed that I didn't reflect all of my clouds. I'll catch it, I'll fix it, not a big deal. A few more red streaks. And I'm actually gonna bring in bring out that sun beam further out with the yellow right in the center there. Gonna come down more. There it comes. Yeah. Now the same way as with the clouds, as they got higher up, they got a little bit further apart. As I come forward on the painting, then I come down on the painting with that yellow beam of sunlight. I'm going to make it be slightly wider, and it's going to be slightly um, more space between the really bold statements, particularly of the lightest parts. So it's not all going to be the same color of yellow. It's not like it's a solid band. I'm really letting the be lighter parts and darker parts and I'm just doing that by making sure I'm using my entire brush amount or load of paint on my brush I'm getting through the whole thing with it so I put the paint on there and I use it till I have no more paint coming off the brush and that'll give me all these little lovely little effects a little bit more yellow over on the right hand side those high clouds are going to catch a little bit more of the light, so I need to make sure that I deal with that. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, it's starting to take shape. I like it. This is the fun part for me when the painting really starts to shine and have a life of its, life of its own. That is always my favorite part of any painting. And it's so simple, too. I'm not doing anything fancy. It's mostly horizontal strokes and paying attention to where the light's falling. And that's it, really. I'm nothing fancy here. No tricks. Just observation. I'm adding a little water to the brush, and I'm going to start blending that red slightly more into the orange. I realized that the transition was a little bit harsh, so to stop that from being quite so harsh, I brought that red all the way up to the top and let the orange kind of play and dance behind but there's a kind of slightly opaque watery layer above it of the red and I think it looks just beautiful just so beautiful add it down below a little bit just playing with the lines yeah what a nice painting okay I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna darken my uh, mountains a little bit. They got a little bit light on me because of that milky orange layer that I put on there. Remember that? So I'm going to go back in and in a few spots just add a little bit more darkness to them. Um, as they dry they get a little bit lighter so I'm knowing that another layer of just pure jet black here um, will really help define those edges. Where are those mountains? What's happening? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of that reddish orange color. Really define the bottom of that mountain. Nice. And a little bit more black. Still using a, looks like a flathead brush there. Yeah. Very tiny, small flathead brush, but it is one. Okay, back to my larger flathead brush. And same thing here, that orange-red mixture. Just trying to define the bottom of those mountains. Okay, just going to smooth this out down here a little bit more. Might go back in and add a little bit more orange to the bottom. I'm not sure if I will about that yet. Let me think about that for a minute. Hmm. A little bit more of the white. That white is just the orange color mixed with a ton of white and a hint of red and that's how I get that very muted sort of off color white orange mixture. I'm gonna sneak it up into a little bit into that red to break that red up. Smooth it out. 
again, it's just finding a balance. Painting is all about finding a balance. I'll do something and I'll change it, and then I'll change it again, and try something else, and then I'll play with it again. And again, I'm looking at the sky and just trying to see, okay, where does the orange start? Where does the orange stop? Bringing in a little bit more here and there. A little bit more of the lighter orange at the top there. Just trying to get it to match as much as possible. Just a few more trailing little bits of yellow right here at the bottom. Not very much paint on that brush, I can assure you of that. Okay, now I told you before, I need to go back into that left corner and add in some more of my shadow clouds, and I'm going to take that opportunity, opportunity to do that now using that purple black mixture. And I'm just going to put a few in, more or less copying what's above, best I can. Doesn't have to be exact. enough a little bit of yellow here and there Oop, that's too much that big blob of yellow does not work but I'm gonna keep going and I can use it to my advantage and that one little blob on the left hand side is way too bright but just take a, a dry brush with a little red on it and just kind of smear it out and suddenly it looks just great Okay, we are nearly done with this painting. The temptation is always to overwork it, to keep adding this little detail and that little detail, and it, it just becomes where you're just doing the same thing over and over again. And I don't want it to get to that point, so I'm just adding a few final couple minutes of work here, a few more red trailing water lines in between those yellow on the side here. Again, just trying to match what's above best I can. More of the red, really getting bold with that red. Maybe a little too bold with that red between you and me. <laughs> I think I fixed it. I'm trying to remember if I fixed it. Or did I make the. Oh, that's what I did. I made the sky match. That's what I did. I like the red a little bit stronger at the bottom, so what do you do when that happens? You just change your sky. It's that simple classic example of how great painting it really is and anyone can do it it doesn't take much training to do this um, I took over a year of art in college I painted before that there's a little bit more orange for you slow that red down get that orange back in there and uh, I took it say anyways I took a year of painting in college and I just loved it it was so much fun um, I actually was a music major at the time so I couldn't do art full-time or take as many classes in art as I wanted to but what I did learn I had some fantastic teachers and uh, learned a lot and then I've just been kept working on it and the more you paint the more you understand painting and the better you get at it and just keep trying new things and if it doesn't work out oh well grab another canvas start again take old canvases just guess so them again they'll have some texture on there start over it's, it's so easy don't get discouraged if your paint doesn't work out right away just keep working at it and eventually you'll be able to paint all kinds of just wonderful new places and places you've seen and landscapes, abstracts, cityscapes, people, whatever you like. Okay, I added a few more hints of orange on the right hand side. Looking good, looking good. A couple last few minutes here. A couple of last minute touches. And a little bit more red in there. Give it some more definition, make the detail stand out. A bit of orange, you can just see I'm just trying to make it match slightly, slightly more. As much as I can. Remember, I'm exaggerating slightly. The beam, what is very small at the top, it becomes elongated and wider in the reflection. 
Um, so it's a stylistic choice, but it very effective one, I think. So keep your, your layers and of uh, light above pretty pretty tight, and then the ones below can be wider and looser. A couple last minute little yellow wispy clouds right at the top. Just using a very faint yellow, and we're done. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time painting for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Charles Wolf, and this is the Orange uh, Sky Painting. And check out my blog at impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. See you later.